Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists with me, Diana O'Carroll. This week, try attaching yourself to the fridge door for this question. Hi, uh, Naked Scientist. It's Alan Blake from London. I have a question for you, please. I received a brochure from a company called Magnetic Therapy Limited advertising all things magnetic and claiming to cure all sorts of ailments like snoring if this object was put up the nostrils and all sorts of uh, aches and pains if worn on different parts of the body. Please can you advise me if there is any evidence at all to prove that magnets have these type of powers and if so, how they work? Thank you. How magnetic are we and do ferrous magnets have an effect on our health? My name is Stuart Richmond. I'm from the Department of Health Sciences at the University of York. The fact that blood contains iron is one of the reasons why some people believe magnetic bracelets might have an effect on the human body. However, blood is not magnetic in a conventional sense. In other words, it's not ferromagnetic, which is what most people understand as magnetism. If blood was ferromagnetic, then people would bleed to death or explode in MRI scanners, which produce much stronger magnetic forces than those of magnetic bracelets. So although deoxygenated haemoglobin is paramagnetic and very slightly attracted to a magnet, and also both oxygenated haemoglobin and plasma are diamagnetic, or in other words, slightly repelled by a magnet, in theory, wearing a magnetic bracelet shouldn't have a physiological effect. Firstly, any influence on the polarity of ions within red blood cells would be lost because blood flows in a pressurized and turbulent way. Secondly, blood is warm, so for any paramagnetic effect to occur, it would need to overcome the forces of Brownian motion, all of which are extremely unlikely. So, returning to the second part of the question on do magnetic bracelets actually work, in my research on magnet therapy and arthritis, I began not by asking how magnetic bracelets might work, but rather by testing whether they had any health effects on humans and by trying to control for the power of imagination. The best available evidence shows that magnet therapy lacks any meaningful effect other than a placebo effect for arthritis and pain control. Although there are some contradictory results, it would appear that for those trials which have shown a benefit, they've also tended to suffer from problems of blinding, which might explain those findings. And when he says the test subjects weren't blind, that means that they were able to identify if their bracelet was magnetic or not, potentially altering the outcome of the trial. So despite this, the effects of positive suggestions should not be discounted. If people choose to believe that wearing a magnet might help, then it may well do. Although there are no known side effects, the danger is, however, that people may use magnetic bracelets instead of other clinically effective treatments. So magnetic jewellery hasn't, as yet, been conclusively proven to reap health benefits upon their patients. But some things should be said for the placebo effect. Sometimes just believing that something works can make you feel better. On the forum, Steve Fish commented, If the magnet doesn't stick to you, it won't do you any good. But if it does stick, run screaming. And Clifford Kay said that it is possible to polarise hydrogen atoms in water using a magnet. Indeed, one group of researchers made animals levitate using this phenomenon. Next week, prepare for those Christmas parties. Hello, my name's Shane, and I've got a question. My question is, why is it that some people are very, very photogenic while other people are um, not quite as easy on the eye, to put it politely. Thank you very much. Why is it that some people manage to look great in photos, even if they're pretty ordinary in real life, while some look awful when they're quite good-looking, and others, like me, look uglier than a blobfish that's graduated from the hideous college of repugnantness and then been beaten several times over the head with a tasteless piece of furniture that has been stuffed full of models of the world's ugliest car, which everyone knows is the Fiat Cubo. Answers on the forum at thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum or email chris at thenakedscientists.com. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.